Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I've got on the bench this week is a print that actually, I guess it kind of co-starred in a video, I think two back. It was the video that we did the replacement battery cover for a different pair of digital calipers. And we had done sort of a, a versus. It was like an FDM versus SLA and talked a little bit about, you know, what application SLA really has in 2023 uh, for functional prints because, you know, FDM has just gotten so much better even for small stuff. Uh, but this is something that I... Uh, design based on an existing design, and I'll share that with you guys as well, uh, to both stir and comb the resin for my Elegoo Mars. This is printed in TPU, so it's quite flexible, although not too flexible. I use the Sane Smart stuff. I don't remember what the shore hardness is offhand, but I'll link the specific filament that I printed this guy in um, down in the description below if you want to pick some up. And this serves two purposes. Uh, resin does tend to separate when you let it sit for a while. I don't know if it chemically separates or uh, if the dye just settles out of it, but I always mix mine up before I print. And the other thing that you have to be really careful with on a resin printer is to get any pieces of hardened resin out of the vat before you print. Uh, this is a vat from my Elegoo Mars. Uh, it's not complete. It's just sort of the frame. Um, if this if this was a vat that was ready to go, first of all, it'd be filled with resin, but it also wouldn't have a hole in the bottom. Uh, these take what's called like an FEP or a FEP sheet that goes on the bottom. Uh, think of it like a clear piece of plastic uh, that gets tightened into this frame so that um, it makes up the bottom, but light can still pass through. And that's important because the way that resin printing works is we have sort of a screen, like an LCD screen underneath this that masks individual pixels, a bright UV light underneath, and for each layer, the light shines through that screen and whatever pixels are not masked, it cures the resin. And the first, uh, the first layer actually cures onto that clear uh, plastic layer. I don't, I don't know what type of plastic it is. It's an FEP sheet. Um, but the first layer actually cures onto that and then the, uh, the build plate lifts up um, and takes that along with it. Uh, it actually pulls it off the sheet and it stays on the build plate. Then it comes back down and cures another layer on top and just keeps lifting, rinse, repeat, till uh, eventually you have the whole print. That's why if you see like a, a time lapse of an SLA print, it almost looks like it's pulling a solid piece of material out of the liquid resin vat. It's not, it's just, it's curing it one layer at a time, upside down, kind of the opposite how we're used to seeing it happen in FDM. Anyway, so imagine that this has that sheet on the bottom and it's filled with resin. If you had any failed prints or if you had any pieces maybe that weren't supported in your last print, that resin may have cured but broken off of your supports or that print and now you have solid chunks of resin in your vat. Well, remember that first layer are build plates coming all the way down and basically touching uh, that FEP sheet uh, to cure that first layer. So. Imagine now I have, you know, a big rectangle that's pretty much the same size as the inside of this vat coming all the way down. Anything solid there is going to get crushed. It's either, well, it's either going to get crushed, it's going to break our sheet, break the LCD screen underneath, um, or cause our sheet, you know, not to sit flat, and we're going to get a failed print. None of those things are good. So what we want to do is make sure that we get any of those solid chunks out of here. And that's where this guy comes in. This I designed for specifically for the Elegoo Mars resin vat that you could, you could resize it to fit uh, just about any resin printer. And what if I drop this guy in here, you can see it actually pinches down just a little bit and it's a perfect fit inside the bottom part of this. It's, 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 uh, it's not quite as wide as the top. The resin vat slopes down so that, you know, as you get resin up on the sides, it easily drains back down in. Um, but if we push again, if we come all the way down to the bottom, you can see that is a tight fit on the sides. So I put this in like this, and I just very slowly slide this up. And it moves a bit easier when there's a liquid in here, but I slide this up, keeping contact with the bottom. And it actually takes a while for the resin to, to flow through these, these small little spaces here. Um, but you wouldn't want to make those any larger because think of this as sort of our filter size, right? Any particles that are smaller then these gaps are going to be allowed to pass through and, you know, honestly aren't a huge deal. But anything that's bigger is going to stay on there. And when we get up to the end, we can lift this up and they're left on here. We have sort of a tray there in the back so that that stuff doesn't just fall off the back. And I'll repeat that usually a couple times. I'll go back and forth in each direction um, 
forcing the resin through these little slits to make sure that we're filtering out any of those hard chunks in there. Um, and it can also be used just for stirring the resin in general, um, which is kind of what you see, uh, which you saw me doing in that in the uh, two videos back, um, prepping it as I'd already combed it. I was just giving it a final stir uh, before we put it up on the, the actual printer uh, to get the print out. So hopefully you guys can kind of see how that works. And this is, by the way, this was kind of by luck. Uh, if you notice these, these in the design, these are actually dead straight. I think this absorbed some resin. Um, I always wipe it down with IPA really good when I'm done with it, but I think it must have absorbed some resin or just in time it flexed out a little bit. These end pieces sort of angle out just a little bit. So when I push it down in there, instead of being a perfect fit, it's actually a little bit too tight and pushes back in. But because it's flexible, that's fine. And we get a perfect snug fit on the sides. So if you do size this for a different printer, take that into consideration. Um, don't give yourself a tight fit. Give yourself, I think I designed this with maybe a millimeter gap, so half a millimeter on both sides. And again, whether you know from absorbing resin or just um, the natural tendency due, due to probably this raised edge, it kind of wants to pull out and that works in your favor. And it ends up being the, kind of the perfect tension. It's, it just wipes the sides so that you don't have any resin going around the edges. Let me show you the design. I'll show you the original design that I based this on and uh, we'll talk about any other design considerations. And of course, I'll share the STL for this, uh, which you guys can use as is uh, if you've got an FDM printer that'll do uh, TPU and an Elegoo Mars, or you can you know, adjust the design to be the size for, uh, for your resin printer. The Elegoo Mars, the, uh, the build volume on it, we wrote it down here. The build volume is 120 by 68 by 155. Um, but the actual vat size is bigger. Uh, so if we were to set this down over the screen, you can imagine um, this runs past the edges of the screen by a bit. So the vat size at the bottom is actually 148 by 91. And that's what this is designed for is the vat, not the build volume. So this is, I think it's roughly 90 millimeters um, in, in width in this direction here. So, all right, let's go take a look at the design. All right, and here is the design for this uh, side by side with the original one that I based my design on uh, from Thingiverse. This was posted on Thingiverse by 3DM, I think back in 2019. Um, I designed my version in 2020. And you can see it's pretty darn close. Uh, this was, you know, this was pretty close to what I wanted, this one by 3DM, um, with a couple exceptions. Uh, first of all, as you can see, it's too small. Uh, well, not a big deal, we can scale it up, right? Well, sort of. If we scale it up, we end up then with bigger, bigger sort of holes here through the uh, the little fingers that are going to do our filtering. So, obviously, we're going to need to adjust that, which I did. And this one was designed to be printed in either PLA or PETG. So, uh, you can see how thin the handle is. Uh, printed in a flexible material, that's just not going to hold up. It's not going to give us enough strength to actually push this guy through the uh, through the vat. So. That I think was the first change I made on here was just thickening up the, the handle to the full height of um, the base part here. Um, a TPU that gives us the right amount of strength. And in fact, we get sort of enough flex up here that we can put a thumb down here, uh, hold the rest in the upper part of our hand and sort of put some down pressure on it and keep that even going across because we don't want to scratch that plastic sheet, that FEP sheet at the bottom. If we scratch that, it's going to kill our print quality. Uh, not just in, you know, the surface finish, but also it's going to diffract the light uh, as it comes through from the UV and cause our, you know, our sort of masked pixels to, to not transfer to the print properly. Um, obviously, I scaled this up. It was probably, I think, step two on this. And then the next thing I did was uh, bring the, the, uh, the width between these fingers back to the original width. I think 3DM, you know, had the right width here as far as the size of the material you want to filter out. And I just dragged the edges of these a little bit wider and then fixed the geometry up here at the top uh, where it, it slopes up and meets. The big change that I made uh, to this that I, I, I think honestly is a design flaw in this one. I don't know why 3DM designed it this way. You see we have this taper away from the, uh, the full width. I don't know why they did that. Uh, we're straight up here, but then you see it tapers in. What that does is it promotes material to just flow through the side as you're trying to, uh, to comb the vat. And it flows around it. It never gets captured um, in the actual tool itself, in the comb. Uh, 
uh, every every pass you make, it just you know pushes around the side if it's a piece of material that's close to the edge of the vat. Um, I don't know why they did that. Uh, that's that is the one thing that I did change here from a, like an overall design perspective, from a functionality perspective. Uh, if you look, what I did is I have my side comes in straight all the way down, and then has uh, sort of like almost a you know like a half cow catcher uh, that forces any of the material here uh, into uh, this groove here to filter through there, and it captures. Uh, any of that hard material here on this face here allows it to flow back here so that it doesn't flow around the side. And I think I went through two design iterations until I was satisfied how this actually worked uh, in, in, you know, in using it in the resin vat. I think I had this thinner first. Uh, I think I had it kind of taper, uh, taper down and had this, this, uh, this slat, slat kind of come in at an angle. And what I found was there just wasn't enough material. As this thins out in this direction and thins out uh, or, or, you know, was thinning out in this direction. In, F in FDM, it might have been, um, well, I say FDM. In, in, in PLA or PETG, it might have been stiff enough. Uh, but in TPU, it was not. This was sort of just bending inward as I went through the, uh, the resin vat with it, even if I went real slow. Uh, but increasing the width here uh, to support that, it stays in place. It, it stays, you know, you can feel that it stays tight against uh, the wall of the resin vat. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't move in at all. You can't take the comb and work back and forth left to right in the resin vat. It is snug in there. So I think that pretty much covers the design for this. I can't think of any other changes I made from the original design here by 3DM for this. Um, obviously, I'll share the STL for this just like I do for all of the things that we cover on this channel, and that'll be freely available. It's uh, on fpfdesigns.com. I'll link that down in the description of this video. So feel free to grab that. And feel free to resize it too. Again, if you've got an Elegoo Mars or another resin printer that has the same vat size as the Elegoo Mars, just print this out in TPU and you're good to go. Uh, if you've got a different size printer, you should be able to resize this to fit. Just keep a couple things in mind. You wanna maintain that width here. You wanna maintain this, this width between uh, these sort of comb surfaces here. Right now it's at about 1.64 millimeters. I would say anything between 1.5 and 1.75 is probably okay. If you get outside that range, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you adjust the design uh, so that you come back to uh, a width of about that, again, about 1.5 to 1.75 millimeters so that you're, you know, you're, you're striking a balance between the resin actually being able to flow through this you know, without it taking five minutes to comb, comb across the vat um, and small pieces, you know, not just, you know, going right through this and not actually being able to, uh, uh, to comb them, them out. The other thing I guess to take into consideration is the thickness of the handle as you go up or down. Again, if you sort of want to keep that sweet spot of flexibility where you can put some down pressure on this against the FEP uh, without pushing too hard. Um, you know, again, just, just think about that. It would be pretty easy to go ahead and adjust the, uh, the height of, of this surface here. Um, if you drastically change the uh, the size of the overall comb. So, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop this week. If this is your first video on the channel, I do a new video like this every single Friday that covers either something that I've designed uh, or modified that adds or fixes the functionality of something else uh, around the shop or around the house. Uh, or sometimes I design something, you know, completely new from scratch. And I always share all the STLs for free. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, take a second, hit that like button. Uh, if you really enjoyed this video and you want to see another one next Friday, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.